We are on our subject on three kinds of wisdom. Three kinds of wisdom. And we said the first one is what? You're learning Greek, right? That's good. So the first one is Sophia, right? And we said that is theoretical wisdom. You remember? And the second one is what? Synesis. And we said that's what? Critical wisdom. And the third one is what? Phronesis. And that is practical wisdom. So we said there's the theoretical wisdom, there's the critical wisdom, and there is the practical wisdom. And we defined Sophia, we defined Genesis, and we defined Phronesis. Okay? Now, I read something to you from the Bible, and uh, that was actually read to you from Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and then I also read to you from the eighth chapter. And we saw the excellency of wisdom. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. The greatness of a man is determined by the function of wisdom in his life. You will not be greater than how much wisdom there is in your life. Wisdom determines how far you'd go. And it's important for us to remember that we we observe that every one of us has received wisdom without measure, because Christ has been made unto us wisdom. But then it's up to us to have the kind of comprehension that the Bible talks about. Critical wisdom, synesis. How do we develop that? Oh, it's very simple. You develop that by developing your spirit. Hallelujah. You develop that by developing your spirit. The more you study the Word of God, the more the Word of God opens your mind. It's actually the Word of God that opens your mind. The Word of God opens your mind. There is that divine power in the Word of God that causes our mental capacity to increase, to, like you'd say, explode. You see? And you know, when the Holy Spirit is working like that in your mind, you develop extraordinary sagacity your mind opens up you're able to analyze and interpret situations you have quickness of perception hallelujah are you still hearing me quickness of perception Your mental abilities would be awesomely increased through the power of the Word of God. And you know, the Word of God functions by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is the Holy Spirit that actually does these things in your life. 
Because when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, He breathes on your mind. He anoints your mind. You see, when your mind is anointed, you have extraordinary comprehension. You think at a higher level than the ordinary person. You know, a lot of times you think that when they receive the Holy Spirit, He just only helps them to speak in tongues. But that's how far a lot of people have gone with the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. But there's much more. Hallelujah. I said there's much more. The Holy Ghost makes you intelligent. Remember what it says, that God has not given us a spirit of timidity or cowardice. He says He's given us the spirit of what? Love, power, and a sound mind. A sound mind. Oh boy. A sound mind. Your mental faculties become much higher than the ordinary being. You reason at a higher level. Quickness of imagination. No wonder he says... That Christ has been made unto us wisdom from God. He's been made unto us wisdom from God. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in Christ. And now we can draw out of that well of extraordinary wisdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Paul says... We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. We speak wisdom. I like it. You're no longer ordinary. You see, the man who is wise cannot fail. He does not fail. I mean, failure is not part of his life. It's not... Mm? Can we look at something? Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes in chapter 7. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ah, uh, this is great. Shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you a happy person? Some of you at home, you're always angry, upset. Mr. Serious. Or can we, Mr. Serious, serious. Double serious. Serious, serious. Always frowning. And if Mr. Serious Serious is married to Mrs. Serious Serious, hey! The children are in trouble. Once daddy comes, the lion is around. All the children will look for where to hide. Do your children come out when you arrive? Do they come out to meet you? Or they start looking for how to put off the TV, everything they touched? Must be back in place. <laughs> and you know some men like it. They are the lion in the house. <laughs> Terrorist. <laughs> ah. All right, Ecclesiastes in chapter number 7. I'm reading from verse 11. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. And there is profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense. And money is a defense. Hmm? If you are broke and unwise, you are finished. <laughs> He says, wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. 
But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Money cannot give life. But wisdom gives life. Ah, I like that. Praise God. I told you on Sunday, Sinez is, is, um, is literally defined as mentally putting together. You understand? To put together mentally. In other words, it's a function of the mind, the function of the intellect, your intelligence. And it is very, very important. This is actually what you require in your business. You require it in your business. You require it in your job. Very, very vital. People who do not function with senescence, high level senescence, they're the ones who lose their jobs from time to time, unable to perfect the things given to them. They're given a job, even though they have all nice ideas, you know, they still can carry this thing on through. They're just that way. People listen to them, and you feel like, what's he saying? But he's supposed to be wise. But when he speaks, I don't listen to him. His ideas are not okay. He can't communicate them articulately. You give him a job to do and the thing is spoiled. Turn to the book of Exodus chapter 31. You found it? I'm reading from verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, See, I have called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri." the son of Hor of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. God said, I have filled that gentleman. When you read it in the, in the uh, Greek Septuagint, it actually says, I filled him with Sonesis and Sophia. And with business understanding, skill, knowledge. You know, when you, when you look at the Hebrew text, the, the Old Testament Hebrew text, a lot of times um, not enough words to communicate certain things, some of the differences. Because um, during the Hebrew period, the... You hadn't had what you call the explosion of knowledge. The explosion of knowledge in the world came uh, during the, the Greek Empire. When the Greeks dominated the world, they gave the world a lot of its language, a lot of its discovery, a lot of science. It was the explosion of knowledge. Everybody wanted to know something. Everybody was coming up with an idea. It was a new day. Praise God. Look at what God says here. Talking about a certain man. He says, I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom. Have you been, have you been filled with the spirit of God in wisdom? This is, this is remarkable. I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge of all manner of workmanship. This guy was gifted. Nothing that he couldn't handle. He just had ideas. He, he just seemed to know what to do. If you told him you needed to fix this thing, suddenly he, had, he could analyze it. An idea would come to him. Then he had the ability to put it to work. He said, I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom. 
What about, did you ever read of Joshua? The Bible says that Joshua had the spirit of wisdom. He was full of that spirit of wisdom. It says because Moses had laid his hands on him. That's another way of telling us that Moses was full of wisdom. The Bible says he was the meekest man on the face of the earth. And he was full of wisdom. And he laid hands on the man Joshua. And the Bible tells us that Joshua was filled with that same spirit of wisdom. Wisdom. He was able to comprehend anything under the sun. Oh, that's beautiful. He could think out anything. If you told him something, all he had to do was sit down and brood over it, and he'll come out with the answer. Now, imagine if you were like that. No, think about it. Think about it. Anything that needed to be done, you didn't lack ideas. You didn't lack answers. You knew exactly what to do. If the tools for that job were not available, you knew how to create the tools. So nurses will make you a creator. Your ability to comprehend things mentally, do you understand? You're talking about a man with high level intelligence. And God says, I have filled him. Talking about the man we read about, Bezalel. He said, I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom. Samson was filled with the Spirit of God in power. He needed wisdom. See that? David had wisdom. He was a wise man. But not near what his son Solomon had. We'll talk about Solomon. So we'll see the difference. What was the difference between Solomon and David? Are you still there? Because they were both filled with the spirit of wisdom. The more you study the word of God, the more your mind opens up. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? The more your mind opens up. If you were a politician and you were studying the word of God, you become smarter. You become wiser. You become more skillful at what you do. If you are an engineer, the same thing will happen to you. Your mind will open up. The Bible says all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, gnosis, meaning science. Do you understand? Intellectual prowess. He says all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in Christ. And I told you when it says Christ there, he means Jesus, you, and me. Because it says that we are the joint heirs with Christ. What he has belongs to us the same way it belongs to him. We have become one. Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So we have become one with him. Everything that the Father made available to Jesus, he has made available to us. You see, you have to begin from there. You have to begin from understanding that you have that which belongs to Christ available to you. You have access, not only to his divine presence, but to all the glorious things in his divine presence. Oh, in Ephesians chapter 3, when you read verse 19, mm, mm, mm. let me show you this. This is too powerful. Can, can you read verse 19 to me? Ephesians chapter number 3. I want to explain something to you. Mm. I love the word of God. <laughs> Are you reading verse 19? Okay, give it to me. Did you see that? 
He says that she might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now let me explain something. Because you see, sometimes um, in our study of the Word of God, it's important for us to, to meditate so we can get all the picture that is given to us. Now let me explain that part to you. He says that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh my goodness. First it means that you have the maximum load. But I want to explain the meaning of maximum load. It says that he might be filled with the maximum load of God. Hey, hey. Maximum load of God, meaning that you be filled to capacity. That is number one. But more importantly, it means that there was, you see, you're thinking about a ship that's supposed to be loaded with all the goods, with the soldiers, the seamen, you understand? Everything that was required, the engineers, the captains, whatever was necessary, there was a list for everything that was supposed to be in the ship. The list and the specifications. Okay? So, when everything was brought in, they ensured that it was completely loaded, but plus that, everything that was supposed to be there, was there. Not like, well... Since we have two kg left, and we're supposed to have two of this, and we can't find one, so let's get any, anything plus these two kg and add. No. It was the specification. So when it says the maximum load of God, it meant everything that God would give, everything that he would contain and deliver to be loaded into you. Nothing left out. That's what it meant by being filled with all the fullness. It means all the completeness of God. Nothing left out. Yeah. You see, it, as you're sitting now, your ability to comprehend what I've just shared with you is too important. That's what we read in, in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 4, where Paul was talking about that he might understand my sunesis in the mystery of Christ. This is sunesis. Come on, are you, are you grab? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. It's too important. This would determine the type of life you live. How successful you'd be, how, how great you'd be, how far you'd go. You have people who succeed only to this level. After that, their wisdom cannot take them beyond that level, no matter what you do. Their level of operation in wisdom is this way. After this level, nothing can be done. They cannot go beyond. This is how far they would go in life. Some of us will go this far. After this level, nothing more. They're just going to keep turning around in circles. They can't go beyond. Some will be at this level. Some will go higher. This is what determines what you become in life. This is the reason why you find that certain people, at the level of wisdom that they operate in, no matter how many times you correct them, no matter what you say, no matter how you sit down to tell them, do this and make sure you do it, and make sure you do it, and make sure that he says, okay, okay. He wants to, he wills to, he's ready to, he has the physical ability, he does have the mental ability, but he does not have the comprehension. Synesis. I said, how do you develop it? Start studying the word of God like never before. As you're listening now, you open your mind, the word of God will flood your heart. He says that your mind should be flooded with light. That's the is coming to you. 
Your understanding becomes flooded with light. God turns on the light in your inner man. You start seeing the things you didn't know before. No wonder the Bible says that we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know. He says that we might become aware, or either become aware of those things which God has given to us freely. Then he says, which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing, analyzing, kalabaya. Hey! There you have synesis. He says, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. As I hear, I judge. Through the word of God. And that judging, sagacity, that is synesis. Your ability to analyze them. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Say, I'm smart. smart. Say, the Holy Ghost is touching my mind. I'm not what I used to be. Do you remember? You see, the Bible says you can grow in wisdom. You grow in wisdom and in grace. He says, wisdom is the principal thing. Then he said, therefore, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. I told you, Sunez is, is so important. We, we, we started in, in Joshua chapter number 1. And uh, we were reading verse 8. Where it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then the latter part, and then thou shalt have good success. That place where it says thou shalt have good success. I said it uses a Greek word, sunemai. And that is from, again, again, you, you wouldn't see that in the Hebrew text. You see that in the Septuagint. Okay? Meaning, thou shalt be able to deal wisely. He says, you'll be able to deal wisely. Sunemai. And that's akin to sunesis. So he's talking about that kind of comprehension. You are able to deal wisely. Learning to distinguish between different things. Analyzing situations and interpreting them. Did you ever read how that... Oh boy. Come on. Hello, are you still with me? You know when he says the children of Issachar, he says they, they had the understanding of the times. They had the understanding of the times. To know what Israel ought to do. How come it wasn't everybody that had it? Even though they were all Jews. Everybody didn't have it. But this, this, this family had it. So they had the understanding of the times. That's wisdom. They knew what Israel had to do. When you have that kind of wisdom, you know what you should do. No confusion in your life. Everything that arises, every situation that arises, you know what to do. You know. You know how. By the Spirit. That Spirit of wisdom that's functioning in your life. You know what to do. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, we're talking about this is a year of shining. This is how to shine. You gotta have these facts. You gotta walk in this kind of light. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Okay. Are we moving? All right. So we move to the next one. We're talking. Whoo. That last one I told you, frenesis, huh? 
And I explained to you from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 1 and verse 17, how that God has taken His children from that level of unbelief at the worst state, wherever you found yourself. Disobedience, whatever it was. Taking you, like I say, it's from darkness to light, from the power of Satan under God. And it's taking you, his dream is to take anybody who will believe from that darkness to his marvelous light. And now he's taking you from that unbelieving situation, from that disobedient situation, and he fills you with Sophia. Okay? He develops you with synesis so that you become perfected with phronesis. Now, this is very important. What I told you, I said, what was the difference between David and his son Solomon? Because David was filled with the spirit of wisdom too. I mean, he was so wise, he told Solomon how to choose wisdom. I read his preaching to you on Sunday. What he preached to Solomon. But let's look at Solomon. First Kings. First book of Kings. Chapter number four. Are you there? Oh, 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 glory to God. Mm. Have you found it? I'm reading from verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore My goodness, look up here. He says, God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. In other words, he gave him broadness of mind, extraordinary amplitude in his, the the vastness of his mind. There was Nothing that this man could not comprehend. But this time it says God gave him phronesis and Sophia. Are you following me? He says God gave Solomon phronesis. What is phronesis? Practical wisdom, a mindset. Extraordinary mindset. Oh. Hmm. Wonderful. I get it. He says, God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and broadness of mind. King James is largeness of heart. Even as the sand that is on the seashore, it's remarkable that, that this kind of uh, uh, look at the comparison. In a normal sense, you, you, you use numbers when you want to say innumerable beyond numbers then you say the sand on the seashore meaning you can't count it beyond counting now he brings that analogy he introduces it in the man's amplitude of mind in other words There wasn't a human way of describing the extent of Solomon's wisdom. The extent of Solomon's wisdom. I 
I said that the difference here was Solomon's phronesis. You see that in the, the Greek Septuagint. Okay? You see that? It, it's, it's this practical wisdom. It's this, this mindset. A habitual way of thinking. There was something about this man's disposition. There's a, a very, very interesting, a very, very interesting play of words in the Greek uh, explanation of the Jewish description of this kind of wisdom, phronesis. It is further described as a wisdom that loves the will of God. I, 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 know, I, know, I know why they had problems describing that. Because I can see it spiritually. And they were looking at it from the arena of language. I, I, know, I know what they're trying to say. Because that's where I function. That's where I live. It's, it's my arena. That's where I play. So I know what they're trying to say. Phronesis is is a force. When I tell you wisdom is a force, that's it, that's it, that's it. It's that wisdom, okay? That disposition to being in the will of God beyond your reasoning. This, this, the, it is a special something, a spiritual elixir, do you understand? That locates you within the, 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 the framework of God's will, beyond your understanding. It's called wisdom. It's phronesis. It locates you in the places where you ought to be. It causes you to think in a certain way and to say the things you should say without necessarily reasoning. But that's created a mindset within your system. It is a programming. Oh. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. When it is given to you as a gift, it is extraordinary. And then you can develop yourself in it. That's what makes it beautiful. Hallelujah. Hey, come on, come on, let's look at it. Let's look, let's look. Oh, 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 let's look. I'm reading again from verse 29. In God gave Solomon wisdom. I said, that's what? Phronesis and understanding. This time they called it understanding, but it's delivered Sophia there. Exceeding much in largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom, hey, Solomon's phronesis, excelled the phronesis of all the children of the East. That means all the Asians. And all, are you listening to me? And all the wisdom of Egypt. <whistles> Eastern wisdom could not compete with the mental capacity and the, oh, you know, phronesis comes from the word friend, meaning mind. It's talking about practically using your mind. Okay? Practically using your mind, putting your mind to work. But that mind has been, like we would say, Holy do, 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 do you understand? That, that, that means anointed. That means something has come upon it. It's no longer an ordinary mind. And, and Paul alluding to that says, but we have the mind of Christ. How many Christians have risen up to that level? To say I have the mind of Christ. I think his thoughts. I act like him. I walk in his steps. We have the mind of Christ. It's from the word friend. Are you still there? Let me show you something. Did you, did you follow what we read just now? In, in that verse 30? He said, Solomon exceeded all his wisdom. He says his wisdom exceeded all the wisdom of the children of the East. And all the wisdom of Egypt. Gosh. The world powers of the day. The most enlightened philosophers and professors could not stand the wisdom of Solomon. 
And the Bible says God gave it to him. How did he give it to him? In words. He said, I have given you. That's how he did it. Ah! First Kings chapter 10. Somebody's wisdom is increasing right now. Hmm. I see that God is working in your life already. So barahashandalamande. Oh, oh. Mm. look at this this is powerful first kings chapter number 10 verse 23 so king solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for phronesis hmm. and all the earth Sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. This is mind blowing. Look at look, look, look at verse twenty three again. Look at it again. Look at it again. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. For Nessus. Practical wisdom. His mindset. Is that he had an excellent. Don't, maybe, maybe, let me give it to you in, in, a, in a simpler way. He had an excellent mindset. Do you get it? What makes you do what you do? What makes you say what you say the way you say what you say? What makes you think the way you do is your mindset. That is phronesis. Phronesis is the mindset. Your mindset. And your mindset is what makes you the person you are. Your mindset controls your dressing, controls your speech, controls your everything about you. Your, the quality of your personality is the expression of your mindset. Phronesis. There are certain things that make you angry. Why? Your mindset. Those things may not make somebody else angry. Somebody says, no, 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 no. There, there, there are some things that just make me angry. Why? 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 Your mindset. Phronesis. The question is, this your phronesis, where has it taken you? He says, Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for phronesis. In other words, they had their own phronesis. But you see, Solomon's phronesis was high class. High mental attitude. Oh boy. Ah. Excellent quality of mind. Why does this thing offend you? Why? I just don't like the way they said it. Okay. Where has it taken you? This is your own phronesis. Your own mindset. Where has it taken you? We talk about phronesis. It says that you may deal wisely in the affairs of life. Some of you don't know how to handle money. Some of you know how to handle money. But it all depends on the sunesis. The comprehension. Deal wisely in the affairs of life. Now we come to phronesis. What makes you go this way or that way? Why? So this is the thing that's going to make you make the right choices. Even before you reason. You make the right choices. You make the right decisions. Some people always make bad decisions. I, I told you about Lot. The cost of bad decisions. Bad decisions. There are people who are where they are today because of a bad decision. It cost them something. 
Many have had their lives, they've lost their lives because of a bad decision. They said, he was running, he was running. He just ran out and the stray bullet just picked him. Push! And he died. What made him run out? Why didn't he run the other way? Why didn't he sit down? Why did he run out? Mindset. Mindset. He had the wrong mindset that finally led him to his death. Mindset. An instruction has been given. Nobody must touch that thing. You were not there when the instruction was given, so you didn't know. You came to work in the morning and you went to touch it. Now they're asking, who did? Who did? It's you. You are fired. Hey, why did you go and touch it? Why was it? Why, why didn't you get somewhere and stop like this? Hey. If you had high class sonesis, have you heard people say, I almost touched it, but somehow, <laughs> somehow, oh, glory to God. Look at, look at some people have had the whole house burnt for lack of phronesis. He went to sleep and put the candle on the television set. Mindset. He was watching. They said, Nepal took light. So he was watching and then fell asleep. The candle burnt and burnt and burnt out and started burning the TV. From the TV to the table. From the table to the, to the rug. Now the whole house is engulfed in fire. He's surrounded. He's lost everything in one sweep. What happened? Why? Why? What made you decide? To use that candle. Why didn't you put it off? Who told you that you would wake up to put it off? Who told you? Why didn't you make the right decision? The wrong mindset. Poor phronesis. I said wisdom is a force. And when I say wisdom is a force, I'm talking about phronesis. He gives you certain way of thinking. A mindset, a mindset, the right mindset, an excellent mindset, and you're developing it through the Word of God, through speaking in tongues, through praying in the Holy Ghost. You are moving in your life. A higher mindset, improving your mindset, leaving out the wrong ones and picking the right ones and moving higher in your life. Glory to God. Then you find yourself making excellent decisions. You always be happy about your decisions. You come back and say, wow, I'm so glad I made that decision. Thank God. Woo, glory to God. There are a lot of people who are always making the wrong decision. Always. They come back home regretting. Why did I? Oh, 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 oh. There are others. Every time they have made a decision, every time they have taken a step, they come back. Thank God. Thank God. Are you still there? Oh, I feel the anointing. My, 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 my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth. He exceeded all the kings of the earth. This is for riches and for phronesis. Be different. You want to walk in that kind of wisdom, right? Everyone can. Everyone can. Because the Word of God is available to us. Amen? What you do with it is what matters. You tell yourself, I'm stepping into a higher level of wisdom. But you know, without the Word of God, there's no wisdom. The Word of God is the wisdom of God. Amen? <laughs> So you have to study the word, study the word, give the word time, give it time in your life. Praise God. Get the tapes, get the tapes, listen again and again and again, and then have the word minister into your spirit. Have it minister into your spirit. 
It will change your personality. I tell you, in another, in another two years, three years, you'll be a totally different person. They can't believe it's the same you. Hallelujah. I know. Are you ready for flying by the power of the Spirit of God? He says, Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth. I love the next verse. It says, the whole earth sought to Solomon to hear the wisdom that God had put in his heart. The whole earth. My. I think that's powerful. That's powerful. In Jesus Christ. Now, I can imagine. We are, we are really admiring the man Solomon. We're wondering what manner of man was Solomon. All right? Now, look at Jesus. As great as Solomon was, Jesus said, a greater than Solomon. <laughs> I mean, that just beats our imagination. I mean, where else do you imagine to? He said, he called him a greater than Solomon. And the Bible shows us he was the one who gave Solomon wisdom. <laughs> a greater than Solomon. Jesus. Look at Jesus. He was, he was never, he was never, never out of the will of God. He was always on the spot right. Absolutely excellent. Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's an understatement to say that he functioned in the will of God. He was the will of God. <laughs> Do you understand? The man himself was the revelation, the totality, the expression. Do you understand? The manifestation of the will of God. Solomon had to walk in the will of God. Hey, Jesus was the will of God. <laughs> hey, ah! Ah! Worship him. 